G'day. We're going to try something a little bit different today. I use my Ranger for heaps of my trips. We do dragging the boat or caravan around the place. It's a really good car and been pretty reliable. It's got about 118,000 Ks on it now and the last week or so I've noticed that it's got a strange little noise starting from under the front somewhere. I'm a little bit worried it's a diff noise, like a front diff noise. I've had a bit of a play already trying to test if it's a wheel bearing or a CV. I can't tell for sure. So I'm just on a bit of a test drive now. I'm going to try and record the noise as it is. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to pick it up. If that doesn't work, I'm going to um, put it up on blocks, climb under it and see what we can see with the wheels spinning. Right, I'd come along for a bit of an adventure. Hopefully it's not too costly. Just for the sake of diagnosis, I thought I'd try and talk through what I'm doing. I'm on a bit of a windy road at the moment, doing around 60 k's an hour. The road's got some left and right hand bends in it. Often if you've got a wheel bearing problem, as you load up each particular side, left or right side, cornering, you can hear a change in the noise. Unfortunately, I can't hear any, hardly, if at all, any difference cornering left and right hand side, which makes me think it's more around the diff. Anyway, we'll keep testing. I decided I was going to jack up the car and run the wheels. I wanted to see what noises I could hear. First in two wheel drive and then four wheel drive. I really didn't expect to hear this racket. I thought the noise was coming from the front diff. Clearly there's something wrong here. I'm just not sure if it's a transfer case, tail shaft or back diff. But just before I turn the camera on, I spun this wheel and I'll do it again now. It's not meant to sound like that, is it? Compare the other side, because both sides are spinning at the moment, obviously. Cars in park, so they're spinning a differential both ways. Now, something I don't know about is the rear diff lock in these things. Right, so that tells me the diff lock's engaged. Let's see what that does. funny it's still spinning opposite directions let's just think about that for a second that doesn't make sense that should be locked solid shouldn't it I double checked and found the diff lock wasn't actually engaging after all hmm something wrong I'm just gonna check the diff oil level Maybe a touch low. It's clean enough though. Alright, I've decided I'm going to drain the oil. No point topping it up, I guess, if the um, no oil dog. There's no point just topping it up. Having a look in the bottom of the diff will be helpful for um, if there's any filings or anything in there. So we'll see how that goes. Of course it's a different size to the fill plug. Anyone who's worked on cars before knows how much defoil stinks, so I'll try and keep this stuff off my hands.
So there's a little bit of gunk on the magnet, but no filings really, not big filings anyway. More build up than you'd like though. I just drained the diff oil. There's nothing really wrong there. It was a tiny bit low, you know, maybe five or six mil under the drain plug hole, so nothing really. On the magnet, there was a tiny little bit of metal paste, you know, nothing. It wasn't chunks or chips or bits of buster gear, so, you know, I would have said nothing unusual. I think I'm just going to pop one of the axles out and see how that goes. See how long this takes me. Hey, mate. <laughs> These are always going to be tight, so I'll use an impact screwdriver. Here's what I prepared earlier. Brakes don't look too bad. Have a look. You don't know what to do with that noise, do you? I pulled the brake tabs off and gave it a clean up so it's good to work on. After that, I pulled the axle retaining nuts out as well and disconnected the brakes. It's one axle out. So I've just come under here and knocked the tail shaft out. I forgot to film it, but no matter, it's just four big bolts. Not tight as anything, I had to use the uh, impact driver, so impact wrench, so that's good. I'm not going to see, if you grab hold of this, it turns free, really free actually. And if we listen carefully, it's got a lot of backlash. Certainly more than you'd expect. free though, it doesn't have tight spots. So that's a bit interesting. In the axles, turning the axles over, I could feel tight spots. So I'm still not 100% convinced. But either way, that's not right. So we're on to something. couple of points to pry off up here which are very handy. Really reckon for to design this to be pulled out frequently or something. That's heavy. Right there. What can we see? Huh. How is that figuring? That explains why the diff lock doesn't work. Huh. What's going on there? Right, so I think I've got some idea of what's happened. It looks like this screw here is designed to hold this this diff lock mechanism in place or stop it rotating. And for some reason it's screwed back in more than it should. It should be, it looks like it's too far out. If I come around here, I can see this 
I'll try and hold it there. You can see this mark here. It looks like that's as far as it's turned, and that's when the uh, the wiring block jams against the housing. So nearly no doubt in my mind, it's rotated and it shouldn't have. And that'd be why those wires are broken. And that'd be why the diff lock wasn't engaging. Well, it's all explained. So I've put the uh, diff center up in my vise. Just an easy way to hold it. So I'm thinking about having to go up fixing it myself. The actual diff is okay. It's just this locking mechanism. It's really just about connecting these two wires here, the broken ones, back to this, back to this here. And if I can, um, if I can join to them, well, I've done pretty well actually. But if I can, it will save myself a packet of money. This little grub screw here is just entirely free. It's just, it's loose as anything. There's no resistance whatsoever. Whatever's meant to lock it, whether it be Loctite or a, a lock nut only here, I'm not sure. I'll have to try and work out what's meant to be there. If anything, I'll put a, um, I'll put some Loctite in there and a, and a lock nut as well so it can't move again in the future. For me, this is a Ford problem, not mine. I've managed to bear a bit of wire here, about a millimetre on each wire. Should be enough for me to try and solder to. Alright, bad to worse. I put power across the... T I cleaned the wires off, got access to them, put 12 volts on them. It just feels like a dead short. The actuator doesn't actuate. So, what now? What now? Let me pop the carrier off and see what I can see. Okay, so I pop the sander out. Next thing to do is to think about pulling this bearing off and the spacer and bearing. And then I can see if this actuator wants to come off and if I can buy a new actuator. There's something more wrong though. If I turn the spider gears internally, it still makes the ratchet noise. So whatever's wrong in there is mechanical as well. Hmm. I'm almost certain I've got to buy a new diff center now. Well, I've been to Sydney to pick up a new diff center, amongst some other things, so... So that's good. It's uh, about 8.30 or 9 o'clock on a Thursday night. I've got a few, a bit of time I thought I'd spend in the shed. Been thinking about how I lift this new thing. It's so bloody heavy. I might even put it on the scales to see what it weighs, but it's got to be 30 or 40 kilos. Thinking about making a little cradle to sit on this jack so I can lift it up to the right height and just guide her in without having to bust myself. So I'm onto that. I'll take a few clips as we go. So I just want to get the bolt centers worked out. And you just do that by measuring the outside of the threads. And we can see it's 85, 86 and a half. So you just do 86 and a half, take away one, one, in, one ID, 76 and a half. Easy. So we've got a couple of scribe lines there. So I've just chucked up the second hand diff center I bought in the in the vice. You can see the tag on it still here. 
from the wreckers. So my last one died because this little screw came out and allowed this lock ring to turn. Just it had come out enough just to do this. So I grabbed my um, Allen key. Oh, look at this. It's exactly the same. It's just sitting here finger tight. How many other Ranger dips are sitting here exactly like this, just waiting to fail? Absolutely, this is a forward problem. Anyway, I'm going to stick a lock nut on here, maybe. Looks like I've got a bit of room to put a lock nut in here. Or at least I'll clean it out, put some Loctite in there and some retaining compounds. That doesn't happen again. So that's just sitting in there. Finger tight one nut, but that won't go anywhere. So it is. I just topped the reservoir up with new brake fluid. It was really empty, no surprise, a fair bit's drained out. I'll uh, give a bit of a bleed. <laughs> so I've just got the car all back together and out for a test drive. The important thing is, everything's working a treat. The noise is gone, everything's settled down. Diff lock's working it absolutely perfectly. It was interesting to note the uh, one of the little bits of road noise I was getting was from a tyre. So I've had to do a bit of a tyre rotation too that's helped settle everything down. Don't forget to subscribe or drop a comment for me. Thanks.